Okay, thank you very much and welcome back everybody. So if you're ready, let's get started. In today's webinar, we'll be talking about DC SPD, specifically for EG, EV charging systems. So we'll learn some important terms. Also, what is a surge protective device and how they work. We'll look at some standards and codes that are related to EV charging systems. And we'll learn a practical protection strategy for EV charging system components. And finally, the different types of UL SPD and the right specs for choosing the right products for your application. Before we begin, it's always important to define terms and here's some important ones to you for our discussion, surges or transients. So they come from two main sources. We have lightning strikes and switching events. So these are the villains of the story. They're not Bane or the Joker, but if you think about it, they're probably a little bit more badass. So lightning has been here before us and will after. And switching transients will always exist as long as we use machines to do our work. So I think that is pretty bad. Lightning is a natural event. It's capable of producing up to a million volts with currents up to 200,000 amps. The average strike is about 20,000 amps. They're external to the facilities, but can have an impact from very far away. Lightning is not considered frequent uh, when you compare it to switching events, but according to Vaisala's global lightning report, there were 194 million lightning events in the U.S. last year. So I guess Frequency is a relative thing. And if you're like me who had a six week visit from your relatives, you love them. So switching is a man-made event. They can be both internal and external in nature. A utility switching could be one or a neighbor uh, with a piece of equipment or examples of external switching events. Equipment, especially inductive loads, turning on and off are the source of internal transients. About 80% of surges are switching transients and 20% and then are lightning. Lightning is catastrophic or can be catastrophic. Switching events are the light, uh, silent killer. Surge protective components or SPC. So these are nonlinear components that turn on at a specific voltage and divert energy away from sensitive equipment. So all the components shown here perform essentially the same function but they have in different internal characteristics that better suit them for a particular network. So they can be combined together in hybrid configurations as well. The MOV is generally used for both AC and DC power, gas discharge tubes and silicone avalanche diodes are used for signal lines. The surge protective device or SPD, which you'll hear a lot of, uh, so these utilize an SPC in their protection circuits, but they also require, and this is by standard, so IEC defines this, uh, a thermal disconnect for safety reasons, a status indicator like an LED or remote contacts, an enclosure, some sort of house, housing, and a means of connection to the network. Uh, the products to the right would be considered OEM SPD, the enclosure unit to the left here, is considered a, would have been considered in the past a transient voltage surge suppressor or TVSS. So today we call them SPD and a few other names that I can't use on this show. But this is my favorite. It's the unintended SPC. So when you don't put a surge protector and there's none employed in the design, it is the component that fails first. So it can really be anything. It's a PCB trace microprocessor circuit breaker, fuse, it's capacitor, it's, it's anything. It's the one you didn't really expect to go. So our goal always is to make sure that the unintended SPCs of the world are safe from surges. And that is your mission if you choose to accept it. There are some important terms that are actually related to the various UL standards and mandatory codes. We try to point these out in each of the webinars that we, you'd find for the specific market segment or application. Uh, the first and very important one always is the nominal discharge current or IN. So this test comes from the UL 1449 in North America. So it has a peak value that is selected by the manufacturer. The SPD is, is then connected to a surge generator and impulsed with 15 shots. So if the SPD survives and it still works, it passes. Um, 
there are different types of SPD. So the type one would have would be rated for either 20 or 10 kA of this IN. And it's really due to the, the location inside the network. So it's closer to the service entrance of the building. So the same logic applies for the type twos and threes. So as we move further into the building, the IN is allowed to be lower. Um, the next two terms are interrelated and they're very important when selecting the appropriate SPD for any system. So maximum continuous operating voltage or MCOV, and the other one is the normal operating voltage. So MCOV is related to the minimum turn on voltage of the surge protector and the nominal uh, or the normal operating voltage is the nominal voltage of the circuit. So here we see the example of an AC circuit Let's move some guys around here and see what it looks like in DC. So keep in mind, we want to know what is the absolute maximum voltage the SPD can see from the normal network in order to avoid issues. This is especially true in the DC power. We can think of like rail applications. So there may be a steady nominal voltage, but we want to know what the peaks can potentially be. Finally, we have the DC SPD versus the DC PV SPD. We focused on the DC PV last week in the microgrids. So it's important to make sure that you have the right certification because failure tests are different. Uh, DC SP is a little bit uh, tougher. Um, if you have an application like an EV charging station or an energy storage system, like I mentioned DC rail or DC power supplies, it's a DC SPD certification that you're gonna need from UL. Uh, if you have a solar array, an inverter, a string combiner box, you need a DC PV SPD. So later in the web webinar, we'll look a little bit at this. I'll show you where to find this information that's directly on the UL website. So we said there are a lot of standards that are related to EV charging systems and PV UL standards. So they include uh, not limited to the UL 2594 and it's electric vehicle supply equipment. We have the UL2202, so it's electric vehicle charging system equipment, and also the 2231-2 for personal protection systems, the 2251 for plugs, receptacles, and couplers. And then I threw in here for good measure the UL1741, which it, you'll see a lot of the uh, applications sort of commingle with one another. So all of these have a single reference that you can find. And that point, the basic point is that UL 1449 is referenced in all of these items and that we need to look into the 1449 because all the other standards are not very detailed specifically on uh, the search protection language. So we have to go look for it in another standard. 1449 is a standard for search protective devices, SPD. So it covers the AC, uh, DC and PV power. It has 86 sections that describe the unit's construction as a test program, uh, production line testing, plus um, a couple sub supplements that are related exactly to PV and DC power protectors. Another uh, standard that we have is the UL 497B. It has 25 sections, covers signal line protectors for communication and fire alarm circuits. Generally, it's not mentioned. Neither is the 497E for coaxial, but they really do deserve some mention. There are, or these three standards are used quite often and can be found in mandatory codes as well. So I highlight here the NFPA 70, uh, the National Electric Code, which has a, a NFPA 855, and that's for stationary energy storage systems, uh, which we did a, a webinar a couple of weeks ago, and we would need to comply with these. So. To understand a little bit about the SPD, we look at its function, what do they protect against, and what don't they like. So lightning transients are very high amplitude, short duration spikes. So they have a rise time of eight to 10 microseconds and they last about 20 microseconds. So a microsecond is a millionth of a second. It seems pretty fast, but the SPCs that we talked about that are incorporated in the SPDs are measured in the nanoseconds, which is a billionth of a second and that's so that makes them a thousand times faster than the transients they will encounter so there will be no problem another switching events excuse me that are more frequent but less energy and then we have the mortal enemy of the 
SPD or the SPC or SPD is the temporary over voltage. So these are voltages that are above the maximum turn on. That's why we highlighted it before the surge protector and lasting for a few seconds. Really anything that's, that's beyond 13 milliseconds might as well be a lifetime uh, for the MOV. And it's where the MOV immediately goes into thermal runaway and fails. So it's really important to, for component selection and to plan for failing uh, MOVs. Just like any component, it's important to do that. Uh, you can circumvent some of this by incorporating gas-filled spark gaps or GSG. It's becoming a very fashionable way with preventing leakage current, consumption of the energy produced on the system, but also for protecting metal oxide varistors. So it's been a signature of ours for many years. So let's get to the application, and take a look at the EV charging system and find out what are potential vulnerabilities. So for the charging system, there's a connection to the AC power grid. There is then a power conversion unit, which connects to the charging pedestals and to a DC uh, to DC converter. If there's gonna be a solar power input source and possibly even an energy storage system. So now we can understand why we had to go into so many of the standards earlier, because there's a lot of different components that overlap in both DC and DC PV applications that we could even throw in uh, the AC network as well. Um, so if you've attended any of our previous webinars, uh, you've heard all about the box concept. So it's a very practical tool for understanding the vulnerabilities to lightning and switching transients. You simply draw a box around the sensitive equipment and protect all the wires that break the box. So this includes the power and signal. So let's go ahead and uh, drop these guys in here. You can see there are a lot of vulnerabilities uh, across all the different networks. So we were looking here only at the power. So this is the AC and DC and then the DC PV. But imagine too, we can't leave out uh, the signal line protection as well. It'd just be a little complicated here. But anytime that a wire would break the box, that's a vulnerable path. Lightning will, or switching transients will come on any copper conductor and needs to be addressed with surge protection. So now that we understand the, the box concept, how do we go about selecting the right UL certified DC surge protector? And we like to do this by looking at it from the point of view of the UL inspector. This table is really handle, handy, for, handy for knowing what their inspector will take into consideration when they're uh, evaluating the protector chosen for the EV charging system. Always keep in mind that a little certification goes a long way, but also the right certification. So in the case of DC, there are both DC and DC PV certifications make sure that you choose the right one. So the UL inspector is gonna consider things like the UL. It's gonna look at the type of SPD, the suitable ratings. This is where we wanna know the normal operating voltage and the maximum continuous operating voltage. It may need to be procedure described. It also, if it might require a file update or additional testing. So this is where using a UL listed SPD is far easier. Uh, during the design process, and even more so if you have to come in with a different uh, SPD that needs to be sus substituted. We can think of all the supply chain issues that we're having today and facing. And also to know that what's coming up is the UL 5th edition. So DC SPD will need uh, to be updated to that. So keep that in mind. You can get all these SPD ratings by going directly to the UL website. So this information is available in the public domain. It's free, it's very useful to sign up for a free account. You get the clear ratings, like we had mentioned that would be required from the UL inspector. You can look up the SPD type, volts. Here we can see DC PV, um, amps and VPR, MLV, MCOV, the IN and the SCCR. So it's really, uh, handy tool. It's unbiased. It's third party. It's by the certification lab. So it's good for finding the ratings that you need or for comparing different manufacturers. Now that we understand a little bit about what the, what certifications are required, how do we go about selecting the right product? For certifications, OEMs have a couple options. They can use both the UL listed and UL recognized. SPDs that are type 1, 2, or type 4 CA, just make sure that it's DC a DC SPD, and it's not DC PV if you're gonna use it for an EV charging station. 
voltages. We can look at the system from, from all the different applications. So we do have 277480 for the load center. Uh, for all the DC side, we have from 24 to 1500 volts DC, the charging station. We mentioned the DC to DC converter, energy storage, the PV array. And remember, this would now be a DC PV. So these are the voltage suffix for us that you would be using. You can see that three across here that would be your DC P SPD are the same one. And this is the one we'll look at the family next week. So we can then go and look at the surge ratings. This equipment's generally in exposed areas installed outside, at least the cabinet is. So it means it's subject to lightning. And therefore we should expect multiple large surges that are greater than 10 kA. Uh, for in mind, environmental, it should be based on the enclosure that it's installed in. These would be DIN mail devices that are placed inside, but we also need to take care of the ambient temperatures or potentially this could be in a hazardous location. So make sure it has the proper ratings. Since these SPD and are not SBCs or search components, they have assemblies uh, that have a visual fault indicator. They have the remote signal contacts, uh, dry contacts, and they can be modular to make maintenance easier without rewiring. Uh, but there are many more sophisticated options that are coming that you may be required, like smart diagnostics or even search counters to qualify some of the reasons for having the search protector. Finally, uh, in your thank you email that you'll receive after the event, we put some good references to tie all this stuff together. You'll see selection guides and some more details on the standards. Uh, also, we have some helpful EV charging documents for level one and two residential, and as well as the DC fast charging. There are also energy storage and PV flyers. And all, as always, like we say, go up to our website in the search tab, type what you're looking for, uh, whether the item is related to EV charging or even specific equipment like inverters and power supplies, ethernet switches, I'm sure you'll be pleasantly surprised. If you didn't get all that, don't worry. Like I said, you'll receive this information in a thank you email right after this. So in summary, we learned some important terms like the unintended SPC. We learned about nominal discharge current, also the function of the SPD as related to transient surges uh, from lightning or switching and TOV. We learned how to select the DC SPD based on the UL standards and the NFPA guides. Um, we took a look at how to protect the EV charging system with the box concept. And finally, we learned how to choose the right UL SPD and where to find the ratings. Remember uh, to choose the correct DC certification for your application. That's either going to be DC or DC PV. As long as you have this and all the suitable ratings like voltage and IN, temperature, SCCR, and they're in line with your equipment, then you're going to be compliant and good to go. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar. Please hang around for the game and tune in on Tuesday, April 19th, 305 Eastern for the webinar that covers the DS50 PVS family, search protectors for DC power applications like we discussed today. And really thank you again so much. PRAD, I think we are ready for the main event.